All righty, and start match right now. 10-second countdown for the players. Let's see what everyone's going to be going for. And, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. I think this will be very oh. interesting. I see Samba 9. Oh, yeah, let's go let's ahead and actually... I'm going to move over to the Team Blue Square, or Team Blue Overlay here real quick. Okay, so here's the board and everything. Black Blade Kindred as a center square. I think that's very, very interesting. Um, Sombra 9 on the same row. Fire Giant on the oh same boy. row. That's, yeah, that's a lot. I got rune level 60, Moog, Lord of Bloods. There's uh, definitely some late game here. Yeah. That is a lot. Um, the thing that's interesting here in this case is that Sombra 9 is not in a crucial spot. It's not in... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the center square or a corner square, it's in just row three, column four. So it's not as important in that regard when it comes to positioning. However, it is still uh, on the board itself. So I'm expecting one of the players to really consider going for Sombra 9 regardless very, very early on. We do see the Star Fists here, by the way, on one of the oh, classes. Wow. So I'm yeah. expecting everyone pretty much to go with the Star Fists. Uh, it's just, you know, wreak havoc. But uh, we'll see what everyone chooses. Maybe someone will actually go with a different class for a, a better stat line. Um, also, column three, by the way, it looks absolutely miserable. <laughs> that's that's uh, not just that. I feel like even the the rows and columns, the Somba weapon is in. There's Restore, Rikard's Great Rune, Moog. Like, uh, not very easy rows to go for here. I also see the double Astel square, which I feel like a lot of players have uh, voiced. Uh, can be pretty rough, especially the super tanky snowfield version of Astel has like almost 20,000 HP. Mm -hmm. uh, it can definitely be rough. We have four god bosses. There is some synergy though with the god bosses, god skin noble, and Rikard's great rune. That's like the first thing that uh, stands out to me. That's like very natural synergy. Obviously, you can't always go for synergy, but if that ever uh, becomes relevant. That could be good. And then also the rune level 60 and Moog uh, synergy. In fact, uh, the more I look at it, other than the, tr the tree sentinel square here, I don't actually see too many. I, I mean, Omen Killer is fine, I guess. And Margaret Paris, there's not too many obvious rush squares, though. Like, a lot of them really... I feel like the Somba 9 race is going to be huge. Like, you want this weapon to be able to reach stuff like Fire Giant, rune level 60, Black Blade Kindred, Moog, potentially uh, making your way to, to Rikard, etc. Actually, um... I don't know how well uh, Godskin Peeler works against uh, Noble, but I guess that's technically not a status effect, which could also be right. a little weapon that can stop. I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing uh, Road 2 here, if I'm being completely honest, because if you're looking at that with Falling Star Beast, four god bosses with Rikard, Rikard is a god boss yeah. because he has, you know, the god, you know, god devouring serpent in phase one, rune level 60, which plays into Rikard, and they just have the Margaret Perry rush. Um, this is not that bad because uh for the four god bosses you could do godskin noble uh rikard and do godskin apostle and either godfroy or just do you know soldier of godric uh, that that square is pretty doable falling star beast is a rushable square it always has been here all the players are loading in now time has start um so i i don't know i feel like uh, with uh, especially with the halley tree runes and everything and rikard on top of that Row 2 seems kind of easily contestable in this regard, uh, yeah. but uh, we'll definitely see what the players are all thinking. What I'm looking at as well, otherwise, is alternative options would potentially be Column 1 or Column 5. Column 1 only really has that one Remembrance Incantation kill that could be a little bit annoying, but 6 bosses in Kated is fine, Margit 6 parries pretty quick, Crucible duo okay, and then 8 Limgrave bosses, not too bad. And for Column 5 we have the God bosses, which can be pretty fast if you choose things like Soldiers of, uh, Soldier of Godric. But other than that, it's actually really fast. It's just the Omen Killer, the Seals, um, the Hero Grave, and Red Wolf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see it. We'll see. I'm, uh, I'm definitely curious, too, here. Uh, I'm expecting someone to maybe go for the Tree Sentinel. Uh, we did see that yeah. MPT actually started with a different class here. He did not go with the Starfist. He actually started with the, I believe, is that just the normal long haft axe? I yeah, believe. the long haft axe, I believe, is what it's called, yeah. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, I'm, I'm not really exactly sure if these players can wield Starfist, by the way. I know there is a visual bug with the axe that shows up, even if you can technically two-hand wield it. Um... Did you did you catch that by chance? Do they actually um, have the dex requirements. I believe so. For the the uh, the X is only uh, doesn't apply to star fists, to my understanding, or to like fist weapons because you can still two hand them. So even right, if you right. don't have the strength requirement technically to wield uh, the star fists, you if you just two hand them, you technically always can. 
um, which is the only odd one out. I think for, for NPT in this case, he might just be going for it because of the stat line and is immediately be hopping his way uh, to the south uh, or north Agil Lake Grace. Well, I think Zoodle and um, Bushy here are going to be riding yeah. or, or racing uh, Tree Sentinels. That is going to be interesting. Tree Sentinel, a little bit more resistant to bleed, but thankfully can get staggered quite fast with this extremely powerful Charger 2 of the Starfest. Yeah. Let me go ahead and actually move over to the four-player screen here real quick for everyone so we can get a little closer look on Bushy's screen as well as there's a little bit of a race going on. And yeah, I, I do. This is actually a really, really close race already. And from the very beginning, we're only, you know, two minutes in, and there's already a very close Tree Sentinel race. Both of them getting nice charged R2s off. Zoodle does have to heal here as he does get tagged. And Bushy actually dies. So this oh, is really, no. really good for Zoodle if he just stays alive, plays it slow. I, I know he has in his brain, he has to play as fast as possible, but he has got to be really careful of some of these attacks here. He might get hit here as well. He does die! Oh my lord. He so grabbed the gray stone, by the way, I, which I thought was interesting. I feel like usually when people contest a square, they just go for it. But I'm pretty sure I saw him grab the grace unless my eyes completely fooled me. Bushy, uh, Bushy at the very least grabbed the grace as well, but Bushy's already running yeah, yeah. past it. He's like, okay, you know what? I don't think I have the time for it. Or he's always oh, grabbing his runes real quick, grabbing his 3,000 runes, and maybe going to be doing this fight, or is he just leaving right away? That's an interesting call. I feel like at this point you kind of wait to see if somebody marks the square and then maybe try again. At this point you might be like, okay, maybe no one is going for it, or they also died. It's it's a difficult position to be in. Yeah, it looks like Bushy is just trying to run away at this point, trying to drop yeah. aggro as much as he can. This is pretty much Chris and Aggie last week all over again, where Aggie assumed that Chris is going to get it at some point anyways, and then decided yeah. to go for it regardless. And, and Bushy, I feel like, maybe kind of reconsidering at one point, but then... Uh, I was like, all right, no, never mind. I just wasted too much time. Let me just keep going. Let me make my choices. Um, and Zoodle going to go ahead and go back into that fight here. Uh, Zoodle has to heal here. Is on his last health pot. Has no more heals left. And dies to Tree Sentinel again. Uh, that was Tree extremely frustrating. <laughs> Tree Sentinel pulling out the full-on Wombo combo. As we have Tom here and Josh both in the Halleck Tree grabbing some money. Josh a little bit ahead here grabbing the Somber Stone 9. So it looks like that they're both going to be racing for that yeah. Somber 9 square that's on the board. Uh, very, very interesting. I'm going to be moving over here to Team Red here, guys. So get ready for that. And here we move over just so we can look at that board real quick. Very, very interesting. I wasn't able to see if any of them actually ended up checking the Great Sword chest yet. Zoodle wasn't able to really provide MPT with the, uh, like information yet about the potential check that you could get from this tree sentinel because they do obviously need an actual somber weapon to level up one change that was made for the seasons that you cannot even start with some weapons weapons you have to actually find them thankfully most of the time there is one in the round table hold but if you are investing into that obviously ideally you want a weapon that's actually nice specifically with this many late game bosses on the board you actually want to have a weapon that you can use to um Deal a lot of damage now josh is actually going for a really interesting tech that hasn't been um explored too much uh he intentionally rolled himself in rot to kind of leave the actual deep rot in the lake of rot which procs a less damaging version of the rods and i wonder if this is actually going to come into play npt is getting pretty low on flasks obviously with this less aggressive version of rod grabbing this next smithing stone is easier but npt manages to do it anyway so actually ends up winning time here Yeah, I'm not too sure actually. It's a, uh, I'm surprised that it actually worked out for NPT, just because normally it takes so, so long. Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gets really, really close. But he did have an extra flask as well. He had four red flasks. Um, and Zudo finally grabbing that tree cell square, by the way, on row or column three, row five, uh, putting Team Zoom on the board. I think that's going to be huge at the very least. I do wonder um, what they're going to go for next. Like, what is Zoodle going to go for next? Is he going to try and set up a weapon? Because his teammate, Tom, Tom is already doing that. Um, so maybe he's going to try and focus on more of the early game stuff. Like, some of these stone bell bearings 1 and 2, honestly, would not be bad for Zoodle right now. Because he already has a strike weapon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He should have no problem at all doing the smithing stone bell bearings 1 and 2. And that would help him get his star fist online on top of that. He would at least be able to get to plus 12 if he just uses the bell bearings. So, um, so I could definitely see that being maybe his next move um, and paying off here. Tom already going to Altus Tunnel. Going to be grabbing the Sombers 5 and 6. Maybe do a little Colossal check as well. And uh, Josh on the same way. 
yeah, one thing that's not to be slapped on is that even just a plus 12 star fist can probably clear... Oh, wait, Dark Moon Greatsword, by the way, uh, on the Greatsword chest here for Zul. Obviously, really high stat requirements to actually be able to wield this weapon, but once you do get it online, it does... Uh, pretty much have the title for the most powerful weapon in the game for most people. I mean, we, yeah. we have Starfist and Dark Moon Greatsword here, which are like probably in contention. Uh, the one advantage, obviously, for Starfist is that the stat requirements are so low that you can actually afford to level up Vigor, while Dark Moon Greatsword doesn't really need Vigor that much because you actually have that ranged option. Right. Uh, Bushy here going for that uh, market parries, by the way. I think did miss the first two parries, sadly, here. Uh, trying to get uh, a bit luckier. This is a medium shield parry, oh, medium so shield. this is definitely way worse than what it normally is. Those frames are terrible. Not having a good time with that. But uh, luckily didn't have to go for like the storm wall, uh, Ash of War first yeah. to like, use time for that. Uh, there is the first two parries here for Bushy now. Uh, has to make sure that he saves as many flasks as possible to try and get this finished. Has only one more flask left, though. Has, has going to be really, really careful and really confident in the next couple parries here. So one thing we missed at that same time, obviously right now, as all of these runners are in all different areas at the same time, I believe NPT actually wasn't able to pick up all the materials needed in the old Altus tunnel to actually get his weapon 2 plus 9, which is going to be a huge swing potentially here um, for uh, Josh, because he's going to be ahead now with the, the smithing materials, while NPT still has to grab them. I'm pretty sure Josh actually has everything he needs other than EG where he's going to pick up the one, two, three, and four, and then all he needs is a weapon. He might not know yet that there is a Dark Moon Greatsword in the Greatsword chest, because I don't know if Bushy has actually ended up checking it, but I think he's going to round table hole right now. That being said, once again, Dark Moon Greatsword can be quite difficult to even get online in the first place. What else do we see? We see the Watchdog staff here, which is actually what he might end up going for. It's not a great weapon, but it, it is somber. It is known as the Josh Dog Staff, as it is actually mm -hmm. one of his favorite weapons, personally. So, him just seeing him hovering over that and just thinking about it already made me chuckle Probably. a little bit. Because he's like, you know what, everybody doesn't think this is a good weapon, but it's, it's uh, one of his favorites. So, uh, him just thinking about it and then actually going for it, I think is great. Uh, you know, it's definitely a comfort pick for him. And, uh, you know, maybe this will actually work out for him as well. It's still a strike weapon, which will help really well against, like, Black Blade Kindred, for sure, because it's going to be weak against strike. Mm -hmm. And it's a magic colossal. So there's a lot of bonus damage that plays into that. So that specific square, once he gets that Sombra 9, he could easily go for BBK right afterwards and really start pushing that uh, row 3 if he really, really wanted to. Yeah, for sure. NPT ends up getting his own Somber Stone right there, and he does at least have the information about Dark Moon Great, so I don't know if this is something he's going to choose in instead, because once again, I think it's 38 intelligence you need to actually get that weapon online, which is like tremendous, even with all of the early game runes that you have available to you in this format. I, I, I feel like at that point you might just choose the Watchdog stuff. That being said, um, I almost want to give Starfist the edge over most of the other late game fights you have to do. It's like Starfist does pretty well against Fire Giant, pretty well against Moog as he bleeds and you can stagger him. Probably decent against this tell, other than maybe the range disadvantage. So it's going to be interesting to see who of the respective runners in the team would actually choose those late game squares if they end up going there. And as you said, Zoodle is looking for a more early game option right now. He's actually going for that Omen Killer. Yeah, let me go um, ahead and move over to Team Blue here real quick. Bring him up on the bigger which screen. Can be a little bit scary. There's some some sort of backstab loop you can get going here. And once again, Starfist is obviously a super powerful weapon, but it seems like the roles are pretty um, decided. We have Josh going for these uh, uh, like late game squares most likely having the somber weapon same for npt and zoodle and bushy are more looking towards those early early game squares bushy's actually on the way to omen kill and zoodle ends up dying here which might give bushy a small chance to maybe snipe that square away from him it's going to be interesting yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of um what would you say dying going on to be honest <laughs> In this game, uh, with Bushy having a little bit of a hard time with the medium parries on market and then switching over to Omen Killer. Yo, feels lag, man, real quick. Josh grabbing that summer 9, though, for the board for his teammates. Very, very nice here for uh, Team Joe W. Bush. Let me go ahead and refresh all of them and make sure that we're as up to speed as we possibly can be on our end. All right. And Josh Ray in Mountaintops now, going for a little bit more money, I believe. And, yeah, I don't know. I'm very surprised here. So the, a lot of Marga deaths here from Bushy coming out and a lot of uh, deaths here from Zoodle as well on the Tree Sentinel into the, um, into the Omen Killer. Omen Killer, killer. Just, omen yeah. killer race, though, at least. 
definitely uh, looking a little tough here for 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 both teams. Um, might just be you know coming out coming from the work week into a Saturday, trying to just wow. <laughs> the relax lead block is pretty crazy though. Yeah, but on, uh, on Zoodle there, like uh, I mean, yes, own killer is like a Leonia boss and pretty uh, like low scaling, but that's still it's a weapon. Oh god, but Zoodle takes another death, keep being distracted by the dog there, ends up running into the fire. Bushy's still alive, they're both so low on Vigor, which were, oh my god, and then Bushy actually ended up t tanking Agro from one of the sorcerers on the bridge. This is just a disaster on this Omen Killer. Yeah, this this Omen Killer is definitely very, very tricky. You have only like this half ramp to really work with uh, when it comes to the Omen Killer. If you have a Kukri, you can draw the aggro so the dogs mm. don't aggro onto you uh, while doing this fight. Uh, but then you also have the yeah, the mage guys that are, that can't walk at all on the bridge, slowly crawling towards you as well. So this little slope area that Bushy's standing on right now is the only area that you can really use to fight Omen Killer alone. Um, and there's already a dog here, so Bushy definitely moved a little too too low for that dog to notice him. Uh, and that makes the fight, like I would say, two times, if not three times as hard, having a dog trying to bite you in the ankles while you're trying to deal with uh, an Omen Killer. Oh, God. Yeah, right. and, and I think Bushy's showing that off here perfectly. Oh, no, and she does get tagged there at the end, being distracted by the dog once again. The race does once again reset. I'm sure both of these players are just thinking... Um, surely the other player isn't going for this square, so I'm just going to continue it, probably not being aware that this is just a race back and forth. Yeah, and this is why you guys have, uh, you know, dogs at home. Is, uh, you know, if someone's invading your home, they, they bark and they chew, and this is exactly uh, working out for Omen Killer in this regard. Um, his dogs are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Maybe a little bit too well, honestly. Um, and uh, Zoodle, though, on the third attempt, manages to get that kill. I'm sure this cannot feel the greatest for Bushy, not the best start here. Um, especially because I, I didn't even realize this. I know you said the, the market, does, he didn't even end up finishing that square. In my mind, he was like already done with it because I like, saw him in the fight, but he pivoted off of it to go to Omen Killer just to have it sniped off of him. That cannot feel great. Yeah, that is definitely, I would say, a, a detriment here for Joe W. Bush as they're going to try and figure, uh, J.W. Bush, sorry, as they're trying to figure out what to do next here. Josh does have really good momentum, though, oh, uh, with a Sombra 9 going straight into Volcano Manor, possibly going to be pushing for the unique seals, if not, uh, you know, just getting ready for God Bosses and Rikers, Great Rune. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which what he's aiming for right now, but he is in Volcano Manor, grabbing that uh, drawing room key from Tanith, uh, going past that snail. Tom here now as well using the the watchdog staff by the way yeah. uh, getting ready for possibly sleep pots into the physic uh going to be going for maybe some more early game squares yeah and I think Zoodle um I'm I was a little bit confused he's actually going towards Margaret now also with the medium shield Bushy not trying to do that again we I guess we might see how that ends up working for Zoodle those medium shield parries I believe it's like two frames versus the five from the small shield which is like a tremendous difference it's so much more difficult to do um on top of that I think another issue that Bushy was running into is that he couldn't really effectively one hand star fist so he wasn't e even able to get any chip damage off as he was using uh, those medium shield parries we will see if zoodle can make it work and get once again yet again like another square of a bushy but like you said at least uh josh is able to make some some good map progress and progress in general towards potentially god bosses right card god's Gnoble, etc yeah yeah it looks like that bushy actually got that stormwall ashivore that i was talking about before that would yeah. be useful just grab that and it's going into the market fight here but so is zoodle at the same time so does it really pay off for bushy here if he does have that stormwall uh zoodle going for He's some still. parries here but only medium parries so we'll see which one's easier and it's definitely easier looking on uh bushy screen but it looks like for zoodle sure. actually look, feeling very comfortable here with the medium parries, getting his first repost as well on the board here so it's mostly coming down to possibly rng on who gets the better parries <laughs> they, they, they they their markets were for me at least like synced up by the frame therefore a second go for the same attacks bushy is getting another parry and they're both getting close now i don't know their exact weapon upgrade levels like once they're actually done with the parries who can get the kill faster this is looking really close. Looks like that Bushy, this is his third repost here, so he should be good to go now, just two-handing, and there it is. Two-handing with the Starfist going to f phase two for Margit, while Zoodle, I think, still has to get one more repost. This might be actually square for Team uh, JW Bush. Yeah, as long as Bushy doesn't end up taking a 
death towards the end. He does get the stagger star fist, obviously, for some reason, having more stance damage than a giant hammer. Um, being able to break Margaret's stance in like two hits. Oh, Bush has got to be a little careful here. It does get the spin of death on him, but luckily Blender. rolls the last cane hit. Gets another repost here on Margaret. One more hit should do it. Charge dart two. There it is. Bushy getting team JW Bush nice. on the board. Should feel good. Wow, a nice back and forth between Zoodle and Bushy there, racing the same square um, in consecutively. Uh, and this time Bushy coming out on top. That uh, storm wall pick up potentially paying off because they did enter the fight pretty much at the exact same time. Zoodle's still able to obviously finish off Margit, so he still gets some map progression, some runes, Artisman Pouch Online. At the same time, we see Josh with a very big lead in Volcano Manor. At this point, he's already fighting God's Kenobi. His Vigor is looking low, though, and obviously... This sort of scaling here will basically mean that any substantial hit will probably spell the end of him. If he does get this boss down, though, uh, I think Rykard is pretty doable, no matter how low your HP pool is, unless you get really unlucky with those explosion attacks. And once you are past that point, you get a lot of runes into your bank account. Let me so go if you can manage to get there, over. that's huge. Yeah, let me go ahead and move over to uh, the Josh here real quick as he's doing his uh, noble fight. Make sure that Noble got stuck on that wall there for the uh, Nobling spin attack. Gets it again, so he's going to just sit back here and just wait it out. Uh, might be able to tag the Noble through the wall here yeah, as he's going for some strikes here against the pillar to try and tag him. There's actually some decent damage. Uh, it is a Sombra 9, I guess, so there is mm -hmm. that. But, uh, oh, nice little roll here from Josh yet again. I believe the nobles are strong versus strike damage in general because they have like their like skin layer, basically. Um, on top of them. Is but, it strike uh, or is it thrust? I thought it was thrust for some reason. It, 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 might, be, it might be one of them. Maybe um, the, yeah. I'm just spreading some misinformation here. But either way, the damage is still <laughs> coming through. And obviously, the uh, the sorcery spell uh, is still actually putting in some work as well. Scaling with weapon level quite a bit. Oh, feels lag, man. One more time on my end. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. We try looking into as to why this happens, and it is not necessarily on my end. It's just uh, uh, Twitch being Twitch, man. Which moment? Twitch being Twitch, man. Should hopefully lock back in here in just a moment. We do see a nice little slow-mo here, though, from Josh. Nice little jumping attack. Uh, Freeze-framing for the heroic pose. Wow. Yeah, speaking of locked in, and surely I won't be cursing anything here as a commentator. Uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, that's actually real. I, 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 I swear I didn't intentionally want to limit test my ability as a commentator. I was just going to say, like, Josh is looking locked in today, uh, getting those uh, noble presence dodges, but yeah. Oh, he sadly died. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, sadly, we just uh, were able to um, refresh the damn streams. Uh, but we are back back in in the game okay it looks like that uh bushy here is going to be going for the somber not sorry somber the normal smithing stone bell bearings now trying to possibly block row five and get uh jw bush a bit more on the board while zoodle is going for the red wolf hero's grave i believe here in mountaintops because there is red wolf and there is also right. hero Ooh, grave on right. row four Nice little two That's actually for one really deal. sweet synergy. Yeah, yeah. And both in the same row as well, column as well, which is kind of crazy. I didn't even um, really look at that yet. Specifically, uh, that column five looking juicy. But currently, despite the death, Josh still does have the advantage on the god bosses by like a little bit, already being ahead in the god skin noble fight. So that could be one potential way to actually block that away from them, that column five. Nice little stagger here coming from Josh on the Noble. Does miss the repose though, sadly. Has to roll out and uh, gets another little pancake move from Noble. Has to be a little careful here though. It doesn't have a lot of health. Like one stab will kill Josh. So he's got to be very, very careful. Make sure that he doesn't get too greedy with some of these punishes. Gets the threading needle. Very nice dodges. Oh, Noble is learning from Josh himself. Uh, that hiding behind pillars is the best way to deal with projectiles. Josh now going to be playing ring around the rosy with Noble as he is spinning and trying to catch him. Oh, gets punched right in the face. All right, we are being a little careful here, though. Nice little back off from Josh. Threading needle one more time. Josh... Getting Noble pretty low here. He's got to be really careful. Black Flame Ritual coming out from Noble. 
throwing out the Black Flame on top of that. If Josh gets some decent RNG here, he should have this fight very, very soon. You can jumping R2 this if you really, really want to, but I do believe Josh is just playing safe just, just to be safe. He's out of oh! potions as well. As soon as I say that. Yeah. Noble Presence coming out from Noble, making sure that you know he's on screen. Oh, Threading mm -hmm. Needle, one more time. Making his presence known. Yeah, no uh, potions left there. And it uh, looks like that Tom is making his way slowly towards Noble as well. He's currently hiding behind a tree, making sure that uh, Kyle, Kevin, one of those two, uh, is uh, not seeing him go on the elevator. I think it's Kyle. He does have quite a bit more HP. So if there is, uh, if, if Josh doesn't manage to uh, squeeze out the square here right now, I think in general he does have an advantage on the fight, but it's looking close. Oh, Josh should get one more jumping out too. Should do the trick. Gets the pancake move. He should be able to get the kill here. Goes for the Ash of War, and there it is. Josh getting Noble Very on nice. the board. Right when Tom arrives and activates the best cutscene in the game, Bridge. Bridge. Yeah, wow, really patient play. And bloody Hellas. That's got to feel a little bit frustrating after having leveled up the... I know Josh in particular is actually quite a big fan of the bloody Hellas. Has had some practice matches with that recently. And specifically against enemies like Moog, who can bleed quite a bit. That weapon can be good. But probably too late for that now. The Watchdog stuff is online. Yep, so Tom sadly wasted a little bit of time here for the Godskin Noble, but if he has the grace, at the very least, he could still go for God Bosses later on into the game, so definitely not the worst case scenario for Tom here. Going for what seems to be the Falling Star Beast, though, now in Inner Ionia, while Zoodle is making his way towards Red Wolf through the Magma. Bushy here going through the tunnel to get the uh, Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 1, so a lot of things happening on all players' screens here. Josh possibly getting ready to uh, set up himself here a little bit like Tom just did previously. And I'm going to move over the screens here real quick for everyone. So get ready. Zoodle is going to be fighting the Red Wolf. So I'm going to bring him up here. Um, and we'll see how this Red Wolf fight, uh, Red, Red, Red Wolf, Red Wolf fight goes. Jesus. It is first day match on a Saturday, and I'm struggling. Holy. That's all good. What words? Yes, words are good. Good words. Uh, oh, does get tagged here by again. the Red Wolf. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Damage looking not too bad, despite the fact that this staff is obviously very far away from the power level that this Watchdog staff is. Thankfully, at least Zulu was able to level up some HP. Otherwise, that Red Wolf can hit quite hard. One thing that I personally really dislike about the staff is, despite its absolutely crazy power level, is that that hitbox on that Charger 2 can be really frustrating. You kind of got to know your way around the bosses sometimes. Like, sometimes it'll be perceptively tiny, and it's super easy to miss some of these bosses. Zoodle missing the repost. I'm not sure if that was intentional. I highly doubt it. I think he was going for the repost, but gets a normal R1 instead. He's uh... pretty HP here. While, while that's going on on Zoodle's screen, sadly, uh, Tom was trying to do ladder skip here in the Celia tunnel. However, I had the old miner knocking at his feet as he was trying to jump, fell off, and then the Kindred of Rot started pest threading him. Um, just is getting a complete opposite, not welcome message here in Celia tunnel, and then died to uh, the uh, melee attack here. Uh, that is a huge square for... Uh, Team Zoom, though, gets the Red Wolf, gets the Hero's Grave. That's activating yeah. Column 5 here very, very nicely for them, while Bushy here grabbing the Smithy Stone Bell Bearings 1 and 2 for his team. Uh, currently 4-4. Four to four. At this point, the question becomes, will Josh pivot back? It looks like he might be on the way to Black Blade Kindred here, which is definitely solid with the strike weapon, like you mentioned. But at one point, they are going to have to potentially block that Column 5, which could either be done by him just continuing towards Rykart, um, and getting more god bosses online, or potentially trying to go for some seals. We'll see what they end up choosing. Potentially. Re relying that being said, I think Zoodle... Oh, sorry. Go no ahead. worries. Zoodle is probably in a better spot to pick up those seals. He doesn't really have the damage output needed for some of these other god bosses, so maybe that's something that Zoodle will do. It looks like he's currently underground, though, picking up some of these faster smithing stones. At the same time, NPT is fighting Falling Star Beast, which also ends up being a square on the board. And let's see how Josh ends up 
in this uh, performing in this uh, Black Blade Kindred fight does take a hit here, and some of these moves, no matter, even if you're like 30 Vigor, will just one tap you from uh, Black Blade Kindred. But at least his damage is looking somewhat solid. Yeah, let me bring him over to the big screen here for uh, Josh. Uh, like I said, this is a, a Magic Colossus weapon. He should be. Oh, for God's sakes, Twitch, fix it, please. Uh, nice little freeze frame here as uh, we have the Ash of War coming out for uh, Josh. Oh my god. Um, again, always with the hero pose. Every, every single time I go on to Josh, he's hero posing. It's crazy. I don't know. Are we making a movie about him? No, he just died. Never mind. Yeah, Josh getting <laughs> eggied there. Right at the end, getting eggied. Really unfortunate. This is what I've heard at least from Catalyst. This is a new coined term for getting it by that specific attack. Uh, it happens to the best of them. This is driving me insane. What is going on today? Okay. Okay. I think we're back. Well, now NPT, by the way, uh, entering the Black Blade Kindred fight with the exact same weapon and almost the same amount of vigor. So we got another race on our hands here for that square. Interesting. So they are prioritizing to um, block column three because it is obviously a quicker block to do. Uh, the blue team with two column threads here. Uh, I will say, though, the that third... I am actually kind of surprised that that's what I'm choosing here because these other squares on that row are definitely much more painful. Maybe that's specifically why NPT would like to get this on the board, forcing... It would be a huge square to get because if they were to force uh, Bushy or Josh to go for Fia's Chems or the double Astel square, that's like an awful thing to do. Yep. So And, and NPT, by the way, what is this... Like, how is he getting in so much more damage? I don't know if he just knows these punish windows even better, but he's, like, winning the race very easily for now. It's honestly, uh, from, from the looks of it, it's just that Tom is getting way more staggers because Josh is forcing the Ashes of War instead on these attacks. But there it is wow. for Tom and Team Zoom claiming that Black Blade Kindred onto the board now. That is activating Calm 3 and also shows that uh, Josh really needs to pivot off this boss fight now. Yeah, that that's such a bad situation for Red Team to be in, for um, Joe W. Bush to be in, because those other remaining squares, like at one point, Team Zoom can end up getting them. I think they will probably for now just rest and leave the column like it is, because Fia's champion is a... <laughs> I mean, it's a monster of a square. You have to beat Redan, you have to beat Gargoyles to even get that and to fight one of the worst bosses in the game. And the double Astel square is definitely nothing to uh, to laugh at either because the second Astel has like 20,000 HP and can essentially one-shot you with half his, his moves. So uh, definitely super annoying situation to be in for Team Joe W. Bush. Now, Josh does have the advantage at the God boss square, so maybe that's something he's going to be pivoting towards. Uh, to now NPT at the same time is actually potentially going for seals. I don't know why else he would be going for Tibia Mariners, potentially picking up that death route to then return to the Grace to get that uh, beast seal. Yeah, uh, I think this is a good play from Josh here, going for that column five block, going for god bosses. I think that is the best case scenario. Uh, looks like that Tom might be going for... Uh, he's going for Tibia seals, Mariners. Probably. Seals, I would guess. Oh, like seals. The beast yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That would make sense. Yeah, so he's currently working towards that. But he uh, is moving now straight towards uh, Garonk now going to be grabbing that claw mark seal and then going to go for all those other fights. Looks like that Bushy might be going for seals right, as well, man. though, as he's making his way towards up to this uh, broken down church that gives you the, I believe, the Golden Order seal? Yeah, I, I'm never sure it's either the Golden Order or the Earth Tree one. Earth Tree uh, is in Volcano Manor, so this is definitely got to be the old okay, Golden okay. Order one then. It's got to yeah. be that one then, yeah. I'm pretty sure. It's always a little, they look the same, almost. And is that the minor Erdtree Church, which is making me think, like, oh, maybe this is the Erdtree Seal. That is the Golden Order Seal in the Erdtree Church, though. But yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. We got that one. <laughs> uh, that's definitely an easier pickup, though, than the one that NPT has, because for that, you need to actually have that Grace at Gurang and have a Death Root available. There's, like, one other seal that's somewhat viable if you have Capital Access, being that, like, Gravel Stone Seal, but they are all very far away from that. So I think NPT might actually have the lead... He is probably heading towards... Oh, now that being said, though, Bushy actually has the advantage on the um, the Godslayer seal, as he's already killed Margit. Um, NPT will blast through that quite quickly with this weapon, but that's definitely an advantage for Bushy. So that's actually going to be a pretty close race. Well, do, keep in mind here, actually, that Tom did start with a different class here, and I do see that he's got the Beast Claw incantation, which means he did start with a seal on top of that. So he probably already has a seal in his pocket, 
that oh. uh, Bushy doesn't have. So he might be already a ahead by one seal, while Josh here currently fighting on the God Serpent to get the God Bosses. And it looks like that Zoodle is going for that same square as he just killed Soldier of Godric. So we have two different races on both teams. We have the God Boss square going for Zoodle and Josh here, and then also the uh, seal square for NPT and Bushy. So we're having a double race. That's pretty interesting. I'm trying to think. So Zoodle is probably going to go for Godfroy, uh, Godric, Godskin Apostle, and then what would be his last god boss in that situation? Godfroy, Godskin, Apostle, Rick. Because I feel like I'm just surprised that you would go for that square knowing that Josh has already defeated Godskin Noble. Uh, yeah, I think it's just like a priority thing, you know, where you're like, mm -hmm. you know what, we already have Column 5 activated. Uh, well, I mean, this is the thing. They're, they're really bulldozing that uh, Column 5 line. They're, they're committing to the line. They're not letting it sink in. If they get both those squares, that's a bingo line for them. That's an extra two points. Why wouldn't they go for it? You know what I mean? Um, at the very least, try to contest it as much as you can as a team. Uh, phase two here, by the way, coming out for Josh uh, on the record fight. It looks like Zoodle may be prepared for now just in case, getting some map progression and actually pivoting off of it now. I mean, he might be picking up the smithing force here at the chair. Uh, well, his staff is already plus 12, though, so that's actually not going to do much for him. Instead, he might be actually trying to make progress towards Fia's champions as well while heading towards... Uh, there's also Caleb bosses on the boards. Um, but also, yeah, heading towards uh, Radan, the Radan area. Joshua got to be a little be careful. He's running out of health, it looks like, but already got hit a couple of times from Rikard. Hopefully, gets a stagger here soon. Does get the uh, phase two transition in Rikard and might be going for what is the uh, insta lock where you just keep Ash of yeah. Warring. This only works, though, if he does the foot stomp. Uh, so when you see his foot stomp coming out and the clouds start above his head, uh, you're able to just Ash of War the first part of the Serpent Hunt um, onto Rikard and it'll constantly stagger him over and over again. This is normally where you use like a Starlight Shard so you get mana back while you're doing this just to make it a bit more consistent because otherwise he has to drink a blue flask here to keep it going because right now he's out of juice so he's going to have to... Oh, he does have one more blue flask so he's going to keep on going for that. One more square was marked by right. uh, Team Zoom here which is Unique Seals. So that is definitely... Oh, wow, that was so fast. Yeah, he yeah, definitely that was definitely what you said. Yeah, it was definitely that he already started with the seal. That was, like, probably the fastest completion I've seen for that Garank to Godslayer seal into the one he started with on, like, round table. Damn, that's uh, incredibly fast. Uh, it looks like, though, to me, that um, Team Joe W. Bush will be able to block that square. I mean, as, as long as Josh doesn't end up choking towards the very end, he has those two very tanky god bosses out of the way. All he needs to do from this point is to go Froy and Soldier of Godric, and he should secure that square. There we go. There is that fight for Josh now. First try on Riker. Nice. Very good job. Going to be leaving as soon as he gets that demigod uh, text on his screen. Going straight to Altus. I think he's going straight for that Godskin Apostle in uh, Altus Plateau slash Windmill Village as NPT is going to be grabbing some Something Stones here in uh, Stormvale and then going for Market potentially. I think he's grabbing the Smithing Stones here to upgrade his seal so that he can possibly kill uh, Godric with a plus three seal. Uh, possibly Claw Mark Seal, as the Beast Claw is a Beast Incantation, uh, so the Claw Mark Seal does buff the damage by 10%. Interested to see how that's going to perform. I've personally done this boss of the Stone of Garank before, which actually performs quite hilariously well. Uh, huge like stagger potential and solid damage. Haven't really seen the Beast Claw in that fight, but I'm interested to see how that goes. I'm surprised that Josh is heading this way right now. I don't know if he's trying to actually get capital access or something like that and potentially use Gold Free as one of his god bosses. I I'm I'm kind of lost as to why else he would head this way compared to like you said the Godskin Apostle or uh, Goldfroy. Maybe he's just wanting to pick up some golden seeds. I'm I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, not too sure either. This is uh, Tom here now using the Beast Cloud, though, on... Sorry, Godric. I'm um, trying to see what the damage is like. Takes very long to charge up, and not a lot of damage. 208 damage, it looks uh, like, from uh, each cast. So this is definitely going to take him a while. He does have six flasks, though, so hopefully that is enough. It does get tagged here by the Fury of uh, Godric, though. I wonder how much poise damage this does, too. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I know the, the stone can like do insane stance damage. I don't know about the Beast Claw. It's not looking too amazing, if I'm being honest. But it's, it's okay, I guess. It will get him the square at the very least. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. going to be very nice. 
Okay, so Josh really only wanted those golden seeds. He's also level 46, by the way, I was able to just catch. So getting kind of close to that rune level 60 square. And they do have some sorts of threat there on... Uh, and maybe that's another reason he ended up going this direction on uh, column two. In order to obviously access the capital, you are going to need... A uh, Moog, you're going to need uh, capital access. He's trying to go for some sort of skip. It, it seems like he's a little bit lost. Maybe he hasn't done Gold oh. Freud too many times. Uh, and Torrent, oh, he actually takes the full death there. That's bad. There's no stake there either. Uh, I don't think he's really threatened, though, on that God Boss Square, at least. I think he just has to eventually finish it. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I mean, he already has two God Bosses. Tom, however, is on Godric, and uh, that is a God Boss. So maybe Tom will try and uh, bulldoze the other God Bosses after this fight when he gets incants only on Godric. I'm not too sure. Zoodle here, however, moving into the Radon fight as well. I think getting ready for some of the later game stuff, as you mentioned. And I think Bushy right now making that same call yeah, of like, yeah. okay, we got to start moving into the later game stuff here. I got to get some access to some things. And uh, Fia's Champs might be one of those things. Yeah, that's very smart. It's obviously a super annoying square to go for, but I think Zoodle is somewhat set up for it. I mean, both of them are. Um, Gargoyles is one of the worst fights in the game, but at least they do have that strike weapon ready for them. Um, and I will say, I do think forcing your opponent to go for Astel is the more annoying play, uh, more annoying position to be in. Like, that's a really tough square to do, like I said, especially the second version in the Snowfield. Now, um, Josh is on the way to gold for... I, I'm actually not exactly sure if NPT ended up finishing the Godskin Noble, um, because I know Josh obviously took that away from him. If not, I feel like there's basically no threat for Josh to lose the square. Yeah. But we'll see. Josh currently on gold for... However... Uh, Bushy here, I, I believe this honestly would be a good play, honestly, uh, from Team uh, Joe W. Bush, is letting them have Column 5. Let them have Column 5. You know what? Let's go for Column 1. Because Column 1, honestly, is not that bad. Six Caleb bosses, Market Parries, Crucible Nightmares Begotten Duo, which is a Caleb boss, eight Limb Grave bosses, and a boss with incants only. You could possibly kind of negate that bingo line by doing your own bingo line. Um, which is becoming a bit more and more of a strat as well, where you kind of like let the player finish or let the teams finish that square um, and let them time sync. If you know it's like a huge time sync and go for your own bingo line instead, especially the whole Fios champs uh, double Estelle fight. That's going to take a really, really long time. Uh, nice kill here from Tom, by the way, on the Beast Claws. First try, uh, going to be getting that incant square. So all what I just said is out the window. Very fun. <laughs> True. I, I did like that idea a lot, though. But yeah, MPT, <laughs> I don't know if that was intentionally planned. I will say that did not look great. Um, of all, all of the incantation kills I've seen, that one doesn't seem amazing. But it worked out for me. He had the vigor available. He had probably some amount of strength to be able to actually do that. And it's a pretty important uh, block because the, the longer this goes, um, Team Zoom is really like funneling team joe w bush into those extremely frustrating squares to go for stuff like double us the fire giant can be awful rune level 60 at least josh is like somehow on pace for by having killed quite a lot of uh late game bosses but uh yeah i, I think at this point it's kind of important potentially even for team um for team i mean actually for either team to uh, pick off some of these and wow okay wait so uh yeah, NPC actually going for Soldier of Godric here, thinking he might still have a chance on the God Bosses, but I don't think he really does. From what I know, uh, the most amount of God Bosses that NPC can possibly have here is three, but I don't even think he ended up finishing Noble. So I think he's only currently sitting on Godric. One. Yep. Yeah. So um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a away. hail mary again, play, but here's the thing though for Tom and for you know Team Blue, they are currently ahead four squares. I think this is just a you know what, well, if we get it, we get it kind of situation. Uh, so I don't think it's the worst case. And this is still a Limgrave boss. So Tom, yeah, might not win this guy's square. However, he's going to work towards Limgrave bosses right after that, most likely. Um, which would definitely help out uh, his team. So at the very least, it's not completely a huge waste of time in this regard. Uh, both uh, feels lag, man. One more time. Zoodle does get the Radon kill currently in Kaled as uh, Bushy is still in the fight right now. Uh, or by the time we get out of this uh, nightmare, he might already be out of it. Uh, who knows? Oh, Staff, this is a really balanced weapon. Oh, boy. Why, man? Just why? There we go. Yeah, yeah, definitely no issue with Staff. Is 200 stands. Radan gets staggered immediately when coming down after like three R2s. Very balanced and fair. Bushy also getting the Radan kill, though. Both of them kind of head-to-head now on their, like, Fia's uh, champion progression. Zoodle with a little bit of a lead. It looks like he is actually heading 
I don't know if he ended up going to Weeping here or to the Nocron Crater. It looks somewhat similar. It looks like he's in Weeping right now. Uh, I guess potentially for Limgrave bosses, because that's what I would like to see both teams do right now, trying to chase these early game easier to get squares to force your opponent into potentially more of those late game squares, which can always, uh, especially if you're like, uh, that's kind of how you want to close out the match if your team zoom. I don't think you want to be forced into a potential uh, late game incident versus the uh, Snowvidas tell or like Moog. Yeah, looks like everyone's working on some long distance square here. So I'm going to be moving on to the uh, all four players squ uh, screen here real quick, guys. So get ready for that. I'm moving over. Um, this looks like it's going to be a fire giant race uh, between Josh and NPT. So uh, I'm definitely wanting to see that on the big screen. Uh, wow. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen here. I'm honestly... Uh... Oh, wait. No, I think, no, I think Josh is on the way to Moog. Yep, never mind. He changed his mind. Okay, that's fine. We'll just keep it here for a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm actually kind of shocked to see NPT go for that square. I understand that that's something they want, and maybe they're both pretty close to rune level 60. But I would almost say that both Bushy and Zoodle are almost like better set up to actually take down Fire Giant because they can infuse their weapon with like rot or blood grease or something like that. And they get the stance damage and the bleed on the Star Fist. Uh, I, I I would be shocked to see the Watchdog stuff do too well here, but they are confident enough to be able to take him down. And I guess Zoodle is currently busy to work towards those Limgrave bosses and then potentially head underground to um, to maybe secure that column three. Yeah, and we have Bushy here, by the way, on the... Uh, see, well, that's, that's the trick I've been trying to do for so long. Like, Josh found the right spot. I, I've been trying to find that spot for years. Uh, mm -hmm. Very nice here, though. Um and uh, Bushy here, by the way, on the Crucible Misbegotten fight, going to be getting that first stagger. Gets a nice little repost here, and yeah, it looks like that Josh is going for Moog. The reason why I said Fire Giant raise is because I saw snow on both screens. I was yeah, like, no, okay. no, I, I immediately, I believe, immediately believed you. you I just saw like two <laughs> yeah. snowy screens that had to be a Fire Giant raise to me. Yeah, it seemed um, like the it seemed like a right play, anyways. But uh, yeah, I think this Moog play is definitely not bad here from from Josh is uh, you know going for uh you know that extra money making sure that he gets that level 60 getting moog and level 60 would be huge for his team we will be promoting that column two and column four i'll be moving back here real quick guys to uh the uh, team's uh side here so we can see that bingo board again if he gets that rune level 60 and that moog that's gonna be promoting two columns again for his team so that i do think that's the great play here but tom however using uh his insight going for that fire giant might block that column two already uh and the long run yeah i wonder if that's his uh, original idea in general or if he is actually able to reach rune level 60 simply from killing fire giant he's in dragon barrel right now which makes me think maybe he's going for something like the urge tree here because maybe he's done some quick calculation where he knows if i kill this urge tree avatar which gives like eighty thousand runes or something like that and then fire giant i have rune level 60 online i don't know why else he would be here yeah i'm not too sure that's a good question uh we might find that out very very soon here though um, I think killing that uh, Earth Tree is like fairly quick to do and gives like a huge amount of runes. And maybe he knows if I kill this guy and Fire Giant, I'm rune level 60. That, that's my guess, but it could also be for a completely different reason. Yeah, you know, maybe Team Zoom is looking at row one here, thinking, hey, you know, we, we have two Kaled bosses already. Moog Sewers, Fios Champs, four NPC bosses. Still sounds better than Double Estelle. Still sounds better than Moog level 60. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I, and we can get level 60 while we go for row one. We don't have to go for Moog. Like, let's let's go for Grail. Let's go for Earth Tree I like Avatars. that idea. Let's go do uh, all that stuff. I think that would definitely work out really, really well. Or the, actually the he's diagonal in this for... case. Oh, okay. So he's going for... He might actually try to just... Yeah, he might try to combine Kaled bosses together with Rune Level 6. He's going for these more late game Kaled bosses, which is like a... I feel like a, I don't think I've ever seen anyone fight Grail yet in any of the bingo matches. Usually you go for other Dragonheart bosses, but he's like doing so much damage that this could end up working really well. Yeah, very, very nice fight here from Tom. Already had the first stagger. Should get another stagger here soon. Making sure you get those jumping R2 headshots for bonus damage. And I believe bonus poise? I'm not... 100% on that, but I feel like the head... I know some of the dragons... I know at least Fortisox has that mechanic for sure. I'm not exactly sure about the normal dragons, but he is he's shredding through this dragon. Yeah, that is that is a lot of damage coming out from that Watchdog staff. So this one more post, and then one more jumping R2. Oh, okay, never mind. One more... A couple more jumping R2s should do it. However, very fast very fast fight here, though, for time. Sadly, gets the bad RNG, gets the back away fire move oh. from Grail, but... Uh, also... 
uh, Josh, actually, I was going to say he's going to take a long time, but I think he ended up going for that fast parkour towards Moog, which is why he's already on that elevator. I don't know how good his Moog skills are, but I've seen him fight Moog a couple times, and he's actually pretty solid at the fight. He has good HP and a highly leveled up weapon. If he is able to kill Moog here first, he will definitely be level 60 and suddenly have a pretty big threat on uh, row two. The thing here, yeah, he's going to be blocking that diagonal. That's going to be huge. Zoodle here currently on. Mimic Tier consumables only already, so they're definitely eyeballing that Caleb yeah, Boss's yeah. rune level 60 Mimic Tier diagonal as Zoodle is getting some Kukris off on this uh, on this Mimic Tier now with some uh, nice strat here that uh, I believe Tom came up with where it's like if you have enough poise, you can just have your Mimic punch you in the head uh, with the poise from the armor. You can just keep throwing Kukris at them while they're punching you. Um, which is sometimes even faster than doing the whole, like, one-shot setup. But what... Zoodle, I think, running out of Kukri's... Yeah, that can definitely happen. I tried uh, some ways to make that more consistent. The only way I really found to do a no lightning pot kill for that uh, boss is to use the stone clumps and cater to poison the mimic first. Then you actually have some leniency and you can actually miss some Kukri's. Otherwise, it can be... Why it's uh, dangerous. Now, this would be super interesting. Moke hasn't knee healed yet, but NPT is already fighting Fire Giant. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if he is set up to reach level 60 if he kills Fire Giant here. If he is, the diagonal threat is suddenly huge and it sets him up to win. I believe three squares, if they got all three squares here in the diagonal, they would be at 11 points plus two light po uh, like line points, getting them to 13, which would secure the win. So this is going to be very important. Can Josh clutch out Moog here. Does NPT reach level 60 just from killing Fire Giant? Yeah, this is a very nice fight here from Josh so far on Moog. Getting some nice dodges off already in Phase 2. Phase 2 here soon for Tom. The damage not super great from the Watchdog staff on this specific yeah. fight. Okay, he does do 2,000 when he does a charge dart 2. However, sadly, it gets a weird positioning on the foot. But should move into Phase 2 here in just a moment. There it is. That last hit moves him into phase two. This is a really, really close. I wonder if this is enough money for Tom as well to get level 60. Uh, there is a nice repost here on Josh's screen from and Moog. And looks like that uh, Bushy is actually going for Caleb bosses now. As everybody else is doing like these really, really big fights. Uh, Bushy's like, you know what? Let me go for fast fights. Let me go for these Caleb bosses. Try and block that from them. Block that diagonal with that level 60. Let me stop them from doing that. And I think this is actually a really good play here from Bushy. Going for the fast stuff. He's got the Star Fists online. I guess a nice little stagger on that uh, Falling Star Beast. And uh, Josh really showcasing his, his knowledge here on Moog. Getting He's some, playing so well. Uh, but at the, the same the time, the NPT is just like blasting through fire Giant. Now, Phase 2 is definitely a little bit more resistant to all sorts of damage and a little bit more dangerous. There are some attacks that even with this Vigor can end you. This is going to be extremely close. Like, we have to at least also start maybe thinking about the fact that the Grace is a little bit further away depending on where you end up killing Fire Giant. Like, that's unironically how close this could end up being. Honestly, I would just not even use the grace here. I would just port back to round table. Use probably, the, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, you know, short little load screen will be faster than actually running up it and probably would be. marking it. Uh, nice little strafe here from Josh. Has got to be careful here to not get tagged by uh, that trident. Nice. Josh gets, gets one more stagger here. I think he might be able to oh. just win out. Yeah. Stagger. Oh, this will be so close. Fire Giant is actually rolling away, which could be a tremendous difference maker. The Moke is so low right now. One more charge or two. Oh, God. And he does fly away. One more hit for Josh. There it is. There it is. R1 That's here massive. for Josh. Going to be getting that Moog on the board. I'm moving back over here for Team Red. Going to be marking that on the screen. And enemy felled. Boom. Moog oh, is dead. But Fire Giant is dead and Moke is still talking. Can NPT maybe somehow snipe away level 60? I highly doubt it. Josh has to be flying through the next grace, immediately leveling up to level 60. Yeah, who's leveling faster? Who's leveling faster? And there it is! It is from Team JW. Huge. Joe W. Bush going to be cl claiming that square now. 8 to 9. All the threats everything. that were existing for Team Zoom slowly fading away into the darkness as Josh is currently claiming squares left and right for his team. This is getting very, very interesting now. Column 3 currently the only threat for Team Zoom. Honestly, I really like the uh, the play here in general from Team Joe W. Bush to not be threatened by that Column 3. It's just so abysmal. Like, the, the squares that are left are just so horrible to go for that they definitely just decided if they are going for it, let them have it. Like, we are not going to worry about it. We're going to go for Moog. We're going to go for Rune Level 60. Bushy now working on Kaled bosses. 
and getting these additional squares up. Now, that being said, I do like that Bushy has already at least set up Caleb progress a little bit because if this keeps going like this, it will eventually come down to these late game squares like Moog, like Fia's champions. And um, I don't know who actually is looking better in terms of capital access here. I don't know. I, th I think Josh, if he kills Rykard, can for sure enter capital to potentially reach something like Moog Sewers. He definitely also does have the advantage on Rykard's Great Rune. Uh, this will be super interesting here towards the end. Yeah, it looks like that Josh is actually going for the double Estelle square now. Uh, by the way, Zoodle claiming that Mimic Tier consumable. So now it's 10 to 8 currently for Team Zoom. Uh, in the lead by two squares. Looks like that Zoodle might be going for Limgrave bosses potentially now, while Bushy is really mm. bulldozing these Caleb bosses. And it looks like Tom is also back in Caleb now, going to be going for those Caleb bosses as well, going possibly straight for what seems to be Urchery Avatar into double Watchdog as he goes down this big branch. Yeah, and I mean, we do have to keep in mind there are 10 squares in. They only need three squares to win but i think at this point other than that column three there's not much threat for them left to actually end up with a bingo here which is probably why josh decided to go for the double star square which in my experience can be really quite awful but josh i mean he is definitely logged in today that that moog file was incredible i was watching for the most part of it extremely good strafes extremely good dodges he's definitely in it to win it yeah, lots of nice damage here, by the way, coming out from Tom as well, by the way, on those Watchdog staff. Does Bushy, uh, with his Starfist, be going to be able to out-damage Tom on these last boss fights? Because currently it is 3-3 three to three on uh, Caleb True. boss fights here. So this is going to be a little tough, possibly, for, for Bushy to keep this lead that he had because that's now a fourth boss for Tom now and Caleb killing that Urchery Avatar and just leaving right away. Going possibly for what was Double Pumpkin, maybe going for the other Knight's Cav that currently Bushy is fighting, maybe going for, uh, you know, Magma Worm, anything that's, like, really close by and really easy to get to. Um, that might be uh, the edge that he needs. Interesting that he doesn't end up choosing the Watchdog duel. I know most people obviously highly, highly prefer fighting them with the Crystal Darts, but I feel like an NPT spot, like almost 40 Vigor in with that weapon, he could have maybe made that work. And it's, I guess it's not the super fastest Catacomb to go through, so he decides to go for those Overworld Caleb bosses. And like you said, potentially Pumpkinhead duo first. Uh, but we'll see how he finishes it off. That's going to be an interesting race. Now, uh, Josh already at Astel oh. Stars of Darkness. And I mean, he is like literally close to probably like 50 Vigor or something. He's oh. rune level 60, which for these bingos is pretty high. So he's definitely in a pretty comfortable spot. That being said, this guy is just a tank. Like literally 18,000 HP is going to be teleporting around the arena. He still has some threats uh, actually killing you with this like uh, waves of darkness spell, which can be almost impossible to dodge. I think... Yeah, I don't even know if they can be in light load here um, with this watchdog stuff because I'm pretty sure without light load, it's like one of the... And you see the damage output here. Like, this is not super free. Yeah. Oh, I thought he got grabbed there for a second. That would have been his end. Yeah, this is a plus nine, by the way, for anyone that's uh, just tuning in and, like, wondering what the damage output is like. This is a plus nine watchdog staff, and that's still the damage that you get out of that. Uh, so that's not the best. However, it is a strike damage, and you get some easy staggers. So hopefully that will, you know, be all that Josh needs to take care of this fight. Azudel's still working on those Limgrave bosses. I don't think he has any contest on that square, which is nice. Like, at this position, this board position, getting these squares um, just for free like that, that you're basically once... You're getting closer and closer to your win. And that, at that point, you can choose, like, the least awful square to potentially get the win uh, off. And then it's about the enemy team guessing that square correctly and having a chance at actually sniping you. Ooh. Um, it's going to be interesting. Nice little stagger here again from Josh. It is currently four to five nice. on Caleb bosses, by the way. Five bosses for Team Zoom, four bosses for Team Joe W. Bush. So this might be actually a little bit of a uh, snipe on Bushy since he's been working on that for quite a while with his star fists. Uh, and they might be promoting that row one a little bit more. Yeah, if NPT gets this, and I don't really see anything threatening him here because he has the bad Caleb bosses out of the way he, he's done black blade kindred like grail he's now in that early area of Caleb where you fight magma worm they do some amount of damage but nothing really to threaten his hp pool or to withstand his like huge amount of damage yep very nice fight here though from josh getting that yeah, uh estelle down i'm gonna move over back here to team blue now uh, we're going to check out what they're up to here as Tom is going into what seems to be the Falling Star Beast fight. This would be his last Caleb boss, currently four to five um, when it comes to Caleb bosses in favor for Tom. 
Oh, he said magma worm. He went into the oh, jail magma worm. cave. Okay. Yeah, but like, like I said, I think there's not, not yeah, <laughs> that's the amount of damage that I was expecting here. Um, one more charge or two will probably stagger him. And then he gets like a huge, okay, he goes for the jump attack, maybe another jump attack. Okay, and now he's staggered. All he needs to do is do like a double charge or two, maybe a weapon art, and he might just oh, be dead. Oh, good heavens. Yeah, those headshots do yeah. a lot of damage on Magma Worm here. Doesn't even go for the repost as it's not worth it. There it is. Six Caleb bosses here for Tom on the board. Now currently 11 to 8, activating that row one for his team. Now it's Bushy's choice. What are you going to do? You just used about 10 minutes of your time trying to go for the square, and it's taken away. What are your choices? At this point, like, it gets very, very stressful into the bingo, <laughs> making the right calls now after you just got sniped for such a time sink. There's exactly one thing he can do, and I don't know if he's aware of it, but I think the only... He doesn't he doesn't necessarily know if, Zo if Zoodle is working on Fierce Champs. Once he sees him could potentially mark the Limgrave bosses here, he might be able to figure out that he's the only one who can potentially um, contest... Fia's champions because he's already killed Radan from what I know. So he actually has at least some form of lead way into that area. Josh is already working on Estelle. It looks like he's potentially going to kill another Remembrance boss to gain capital access to fight uh, the Suez version of Moog at yeah. one point. And then the only remaining square is NPC bosses. But for that, he does know that Zoodle has already killed Mimic Tier. And one thing that's actually important is he chose deliberately to not go for the Lightning Pod strat, which does yield him one NPC boss kill. I believe in yeah. terms of the ruling, normally if you go for that Lightning Pod strat, the boss doesn't actually spawn, so you wouldn't get an advantage there. But he definitely has an advantage on that square. Yeah, this is very, very good it. foresight here from Team Zoom, to be honest, knowing that uh, they will have an advantage here on row one, most likely, as they're a bit more prepared for it. Josh having a bit of an advantage on Riker, it's great rune restoration. Uh, however, that's not really currently being contested, nor is it really worth anyone's time. But it is a nice square to have in his back pocket as he was going for yeah. the double Estelle here. And uh, I still looks like Josh pivoting off and actually going for Radon now thinking that maybe Estelle is not worth the time there it is uh by the way eight Limgrave bosses now for team zoom eight to 12 on the board they are currently uh one square away from victory this is looking really really wow. good for team zoom okay but I will say um this is actually extremely smart from Joe W Bush as well they have an immense advantage on the Estelle square they know they have the Rykard square in the back essentially Josh can pivot to it whenever they want so Bushy is going towards Moog here by killing his next remembrance boss and then trying to get the Moog sewers kill and they basically made the call uh, the call that Josh is going to end up killing Redani and then try to blast through gargoyles which he will by the way with this weapon plus nine yep. strike magic damage versus gargoyles he does have a chance there Yep. Yeah, this is uh this is gonna be interesting because if if Bushy can actually make it to Moke Sewers before anybody else gets that square, uh and Josh makes it downstairs and gets Fias champs, uh they could easily turn all of these squares into their favor besides NPC bosses because Currently, Zoodle does have a lead on that square. If he just goes for a stray mimic tier into Adan, he has it. Like he's he's good to go. Um, so that's like the only square that they gotta be really worried about. That even if Team Zoom loses all the other four squares, that NPC bosses. Yeah, it looks like Zoodle right here already going for Adan, trying to claim that square. Ready, being like, you know what? You guys can go for Moog sewers. Go for Fia's champs. I don't care. I'm gonna go do some NPC bosses. I don't even need to do any access whatsoever. Uh, I'm just gonna get that last square for my team. And that's their way to win, because I'm pretty sure that NPT only has killed one great rune boss. He's only killed Godric Incantation only. He does he has killed Fire Giant, but that's only a, uh, like a remembrance. So Bushy would definitely have the advantage there. Josh has the advantage on Estelle, but he might be... Is he going to uh, to Vyk right now? I think he might be. I think he might be aware of the situation and actually pivoting off. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he is going for Vyk here and, and uh, the mountaintops as one of his NPC bosses. However, sadly, again, this is Zoodle's, uh, I believe, fourth NPC boss. Or third NPC boss, sorry. And he's going to go straight for a straight Mimic Tier now in Consecrated Snowfield. Yeah. Wait, so he's done uh, Mimic Tier, Adan, plus... Uh, what is the third one? I, I must have... Mimic Tier, Adan, um, and then Patches in Limgrave. That was oh, his Patches. Limgrave okay, boss. Of course, of course. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, he definitely has a big advantage there. Um, mimic, uh, like stray mimic tier is obviously a fairly easy boss fight once you actually get there. Yeah. Um, so this is looking fairly good for Team Zoom now. A really, a really good call to just um, be aware that that's the square to go for. I, I, both teams actually playing so well. I thought for a second they had uh, Joe W. Bush. 
actually having an advantageous spot there with capital advantage, right card advantage, but that's the one square that Team Zoom still had the advantage uh, on, and that's all they need to get that 13 points. Wow, wait. Very okay, nice the watchdog damage. stab is crazy though. <laughs> like, what? That's not bad. Yeah, on NPC fights, the watchdog stab is actually pretty strong here. Josh doing a lot of damage with it. I'm going to go ahead and move over to their uh, team real quick. Um, as you can see, that Ash of War, because here's the thing for NPCs, they react to the initial um, Inbox, cast, yeah. not the uh, full-on effect of anything. So if you have an Ash of War like Watchdog Staff where the uh, attack is technically delayed because it's like lingering in the air and then travels, uh, you can easily like punish NPCs with that. Same with like the Halo Scythe as an example, where you can throw out those discuses and they will react to the initial cast of it and roll it, but by the time the ring actually it reaches them, they don't even remember that it's there. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, the only way we could really see Zoodle potentially uh, throw this square away now is if on the way to Stray Mimic Tier something bad is happening. Obviously, the fight itself is mostly guaranteed. Nice jump here from Zoodle. Holy. Very nice. Yeah, I, I think this, this is looking like it's in the bag for Team Zoom uh, for their last square. Going to be grabbing that lever real quick into the Stray Mimic Tier Arena. Uh, this is a very nice fight here from Josh. Very nice to see. But sadly, not going to be enough to bring it back for his team. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Josh definitely played pretty incredible throughout this match. Um, getting those really late game boss fights onto the board. The Astel Stars of Darkness, even though you never got to mark it, just kind of held the advantage there. But Zoodle is heading into the last NPC boss fight here right now. NPT working on Redan is a backup plan to potentially gain capital access. Not sure if he's going to try and go for fierce gems. Not that it really matters, because Zoodle is fighting Mimic Tier now without any weapons. Yeah, let me go ahead and bring them back up onto the big screen here for Zoodle claiming the last square for Team Zoom. Going to be on the top right here. Getting a lot of bleed procs already. One more charge R2 should do it. And there it is. 13 to 8 for Team Zoom in an hour and three minutes and 24 minutes. GG's to Team Zoom for day three. Very good match. Very good match, I thought. That was a very good match. And, like, Team uh, Joe W. Bush, honestly, with that rune level 60 Moog play, uh, that was a great play. I I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That, was, that was actually one of the moves that they needed to possibly get back onto the board. Sadly, that Caleb Boss snipe was uh, a huge detriment to them. I think if they honestly got the Caleb Boss square that Bushy was working on, yeah. this could have turned out to be a very different I, I, ironically, I ironically think that's, that would have won in the game because Josh already had huge advantage on Rai Karastel. Bushy had advantage on Capital Access. Like, he's in Lane Dell right now, just had to go to Moak and uh, also had, like, uh, Fierce Champs priority. Uh, when he didn't have PS champ priority, uh, Josh would have been able to just blast through um, the underground. Super yeah. close match. That being like the score doesn't really make it look as close as it actually was here, because uh, Josh had that right card advantage and the um, the other advantage. Very fun. Very very great match though here from uh, everyone participating. Uh, very very nice to see. I'm checking to see if they are ready for the post match. Oh, Lim, hold on, let me move you around a little bit. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> No, bit. no forehead cam yet. Uh, maybe, no, no, maybe no, not, not really. You just, you're just a little, just a little. Uh, weren't zoomed in enough. That's all. So I just moved you around okay, a little okay. bit. That's all. You're, you're good though. You're looking great. I like your, I like your, uh, your collar shirt, man. Looks really good. Thank you. No problem. All right. Looks like all the players are ready. Let's bring them in here real quick. All right. Welcome in. Welcome in, everyone. GGs. GGs to Team Zoom GGs. for taking the dub. GGs. 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 Um, nice match, guys. Very nice match. Very, very interesting match. Uh, a lot happening. A lot of back and forth. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so for uh, Team Zoom here, give us the quick TLDR, you know, um, beginning setup, seeing the board, classes. We did see that um, Tom started actually with a different class. Everybody else started with Starfist, but st uh, Tom started with the Long Haft Axe and the, I believe, the Prophet class or whatever, gave you the incantation. Um, was that because you saw seals on the board? Because I saw seals, I saw incant only. It was beast claw, so I was like, "Yeah, you can use it. It's fine. Um, it's a little slow, but it works." Mm -hmm. um, and that's so kinda, we didn't that's, like that's have to look for an for incant. It, right? um, and the idea was like one of us. Well, I I went for somber nine. Uh, Zoodle was gonna go for early squares into like upgrading and potentially like uh, 
uh, Fallen Star Base, Altus Hero's Grave. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the Omen Killer and Altus Hero's Grave combo. Uh, and then I had the seals, and I was like, okay, we could potentially do the god bosses. Um, but like there, there were some mishaps at the beginning, uh, a couple of deaths uh, early on. And then uh, my controller, or some, I don't know what happened. It was oh. the weirdest thing that ever happened for inside Altus Tunnel, um, mm. old Altus Tunnel. Right when I was about to jump up for the Somber 4, my character stopped moving and my controller wasn't responding. And then I got one shot and I didn't get the grace because you're no. not supposed to get the grace. Right, right, yep. right. Yep. And... I had to go all the way back down, so that cost me that square. But I was still yeah. in like the same paces as Josh. Um, I was a little behind on it. Uh, and I decided that Noble was probably the best square because of the diagonal. Um, but honest, I, I, I was behind on it, and then uh, I didn't find the... So I got the seal in Volcano Manor, then I went down towards like the omen killer but i didn't find the the left entrance to like where the lava is so i had to go the long way because i didn't want to do like a kind of hard skip at the t on the rooftops and uh that might have cost me at least being in the fight while josh was fighting godskin noble because what uh what weapon did you use josh i had to use the watchdog staff I'm right there with you, buddy. <laughs> the Josh dog. The, the, the Josh, dog. Josh dog. The Josh dog staff. staff. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was I picked that because of the because of Godskin Noble, but then Josh got it, so we kind of pivoted off of uh, yeah. the Riker play. I was still wanted to do it to like keep progress, get capital access, and uh, get uh, potentially challenge the Riker's Great Rune, but in the end. We, we decided that I would just go for capital through Radon and maybe catch up on Fia's champs or something, so. Gotcha. And, uh, okay, so there was a lot of dying happening early on. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of dying happening on both teams. <laughs> um, you know, Zula having a little bit of a Tree Sentinel into Omen Killer incident. Same with Bushy, actually, on the same end, Tree Sentinel into Omen Killer incidents. Um, what oh, was wow. going on when when you guys were both uh, going through those uh, you know stages of okay I've died already is this too much of a time sink should I pivot should I not pivot um, and uh, yeah I, I guess here for uh, for team uh, Joe W Bush what were, were guys' thought process after those things happened um, was committing it worth it was it not worth it were there any other discussions beyond that. Well, I I was just like fucking throwing, honestly. <laughs> yeah, okay. I played horrendously this game, um, and all, uh, from my perspective, it, it's usually not like um, I, I never would have assumed Zoodle was was like having a, an incident along with me because of the you, you just don't expect that sort of sort of thing to be happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, a little bit afterwards, you know, we were looking at when the squares were marked, and we're like, okay, I guess Zoodle maybe did have an incident. Um, which is like decent news. Obviously, I'm still like in the fights, uh, and just like losing the races. Um, but you know, I, at a certain point when you're just playing poorly, you you kind of just need to get something going. Um, yeah, get the confidence back. So, yeah. I, I kept going for the early game stuff. Josh was going for the somber nine. Josh was playing really well, keeping us in the game. Um. Mm -hmm. I just never, never really got all the way back. Dude, the the Altus Plateau Heroes Grave with the Red Wolf was pretty sick. Gotta say, I, I was not expecting it. Oh yeah, yeah, we didn't see that idea. We we rated the God bosses and Rikard and Godskin Noble as the best idea on the board, which I think it was. Um, the diagonal was very powerful. Yeah. 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 I no, think the the play from. Like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think this match was a bit closer than it looked just based on the end score. Because, I mean, we were going to get the Estelle square probably because I had one down. And then we were probably going to get the Riker square. I think the biggest thing that I should have done differently is just pivoted to NPC bosses like as soon as I recognized the threat. Mm. 
Yeah, I was saying that towards the end. I feel like uh, either that, or if the Kaled boss square would have went the other way, you definitely had the advantage on Astell, obviously, and Rykard, and then, like, your weapon could have probably blasted all the way through Fias. So, like yeah, I said, I, I literally so. said it at the end. Like, it seemed, it, it, it says 8, like, 13, but it was actually really close towards the end. Oh, yeah, Josh, you, like... 10 seconds snipe me on rune level 60. When you marked Moog, I killed Fire Giant. I was like, no way, dude. He's closer to a grace. No. I ported. I saw you mark Fire Giant, and I was like, oh my god. I have to do that. I have to level up faster than I've ever leveled up in my entire life. I (laughs) I panicked teleported (laughs) for that, and when I arrived, you marked it. I was like, no. Yeah, I knew that. I was like, man, that had to have been just insanely close. It was. Yeah, it definitely was. I had exactly 60. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, it uh, was like at the same time the kills. I'm sorry, what? I said the kills were like it's essentially at the same time. Like yeah. Moog died earlier, but he yapped for like a little bit longer, yeah. and then it was yeah. like extremely close. And uh, Azoodle, by the way, uh, uh, playing very well at the end or uh, the, the the better half of the game at the end uh, half. Uh, what was uh, your overall game plan after you know Tree Sentinel and uh, I believe Margit? Uh, what was the process after that like with your team like what we were working on um i'll be honest this 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 whole match was for me like a fucking fever dream i i'll be honest without tom i would still fight omen killer right now i was nervous <laughs> the whole time i i don't even know what happened like this one hour is like a blackout for me so i'm done yeah. man i, I i'm our, done our plan after the whole beginning um, once he mm. finally got his weapon online, was get Radon, get Mimic Tier Consumables only, threaten that top left, bottom right diagonal, get access to Fia's chance, potentially go for a stun, yeah. like yeah. those kinds of squares. That's I, cool. I, I mean, we kind of read. So, we, sorry, go ahead. No, I just want to say I often pivoted off Limgrave bosses because I was like hesitant: should I just finish it now or later? And um, yeah, like. Uh, I went then for the Hero Grave Red Wolf, and then the whole Radan Mimic consumable only was just good for the Diagonal and the four NPC bosses. And then, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, like, we we read your plays, like, decently well. We just didn't execute on it, like, well enough. Dude, the BBK square mm-hmm. was pretty close, too. Tom. Yeah, was it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was going to ask about that. It was also close. Yeah. Because yeah. I've never seen anyone destroy that boss as hard as NPT did. Like, I don't know if you oh, had yeah. like good idea or something, but like <laughs> you actually blasted through that fight. Like, holy. <laughs> well, I think I think we also did mention, though, that watching Josh and NPT fight was definitely very different because Josh utilized the Ash of War way more, which didn't give you mm-hmm. as much poise. So uh, I think, yeah. Tom, that's why he was able to catch up with a bunch more staggers on his end. Um, yeah, and I died once and yeah, yeah. whiffed some hits, so... It's, I you know, Tom about? was the better player on that, so definitely, you know, just earned the earned the square for sure. What did I go for before BBK? Oh, Fallen Star Beast. So you were doing BBK while I was doing Fallen Star Beast. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you marked it while I was on the way there to Third Church. Yeah. But uh, either way, uh, first. great matches from uh, both teams, guys. Thank you very much for, for playing today. Really do appreciate it. Uh, GG's again to Team Zoom for taking the dub today. Uh, and best of luck to you guys tomorrow for your matches. And uh, really excited to see you guys play again. Thank you so much for uh, for playing, guys. It was yeah, a pleasure. GG's, thank you. Yeah, thank you. thank you for having us. Hey, GG's, no problem. guys. Bye-bye. Love you, Domo. Love, Love you. you. <laughs> <All right>. Bye-bye. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs>